Hello everyone, this is the Trophy Wine Hunter. Welcome to another one of my reviews. This is a really special review. This is the celebration of my 10,000 views. I know it's not a big deal to a lot of people, but to me it's a really big deal. I really appreciate all the support. So cheers to all my viewers and subscribers. So after a close vote, um, the wine that you asked me to have is this Beyond Day Sandy. 2010 and this is the um, from the Greppo it's the Anata so it's not the Reserva really excited to drink this and uh, let's learn a little bit about the wine so the story of Beyond the Sandy starts in about 1865 when a local farmer called Clement Santi um, kind of isolated certain plantings of Sangiovese vines and he wanted to produce a hundred percent grape varietals um, he was convinced that, you know, Sangiovese grapes could produce really good wines and other people were making kind of um, just whatever was popular, which was much sweeter wines in those days. Then go forward to about 1888 when um, one of his grandsons, Ferrucci Biondi, um, started to modernize things and uh, released the first modern version of Brunello that was aged in oak barrels. Um, and over a decade and no one did that at the time because of course they just want to sell wines right away when they produce them. He actually um, thought that Sangiovese could be aged and could also, um, you know, be aged for a long period and make quality wines. And he he kind of liked his grandfather so much that he took on his name. So he was actually called Ferrucci Biondi Sandy and that's where the name comes from. I'm showing you the top of the bottle that shows the year Anata 2010 and it's bottled with over 5641. They produce about 65,000 bottles of this wine each year. So what makes Beyond De Sandy special? Two things. One, first of all, it's got 26 hectares of vineyard. And they um, did, in 1885, they did all these experiments with the Sangiovese clone. And they cloned everything. And they came up with a clone called BBS11, which stands for Beyond De Brunello Beyond De Sandy 11. So this clone was specifically developed for this property. So this is the best of all the clones. This was the one that worked the best with this property and only this property, only Beyond De Sandy has this clone. The second thing is that they are on the Monticello hilltop. So the soil is um, not that, not doesn't have much nutrients, but is very rich in minerals. And that's why you get a minerality of the wine. A lot of Brunellos are on the lower part of the hill. They're clay and they're much heavier and they will actually drink much um, earlier. So not every Brunello is the same and this is why um, Beyond the Sandy is so special. Um, it generally speaking has a much fragrant, much more fragrant and lighter taste. A lot of Brunello is quite heavy. So I'm showing you the cork and it says Jacobo uh, Beyond the Sandy, he is the current uh, owner slash winemaker. He's the sixth generation. The seventh generation is going to be Tancredi Beyond the Sandy. So Beyond the Sandy actually makes three different wines, but the only difference is the age of the vines. It's the same grapes. Um, so they make a Rosso de Montalcino, which is between uh, the age the age of the vines is between four to ten years. I've actually never seen it in BC, but I'd love to try it. The wine that we're tasting is the Brunello Anata, which is going to be uh, the uh, taking grapes from uh, vines that are uh, between 10 to 25 years. And then their Reserva is produced only in exceptional years and is, uses um, grapes from vines um, 25 plus years. The oldest plot um, in the vineyard is from 1936. Over the next two slides, I'm going to show you the color of the wine, which is a garnet red. So Anata, this wine is aged in um, Slavonian oak for 36 months and then aged for a further year in bottle. And this is traditional. They use Slavonian oak, big um, casks um, that are old, um, that again, don't impart a lot of oak um, onto the thing, onto the um, wine. This is just traditional. Um, so, uh, as compared to some of the newer um, Brunello producers that use um, kind of smaller oak barrels, uh, barrique about barrels. But this is just a choice, and I think it just brings out the um, 
kind of the grape type itself because the grape type is so unique as a clone that they want to basically you know highlight it they don't want to hide it in oak so in this picture you'll see the wine which i've turned on its side um, it is a garnet red. You would expect this from Sangiovese, which already is going to be a duller color than most other grape varietals, but it's also got um, 10 years, 11 years of aging. So it's um, garnet red. It's not brown, so it's not over the hill, but it does show aging. So you'll notice that I um, now only use my own photos and not pictures from the websites or not a live video. I just think this is better than uh, kind of looking at me talking for 10 minutes hope uh, but you can give me any comments um, you'll see on the bottle it says El Greppel so that's just the vineyard and I don't think um, I think there are other um, producers that have that are that have vineyards in El Greppel but I think the it's synonymous with Beyond De Sandy the other thing that's interesting is Beyond De Sandy was the actually only producer of Brunello till about 1950 and then there was a boom in the 1980s and everyone kind of started to um, produce Brunello. So you'll see a lot of that. Um, you'll also see in the um, my tasting notes, I actually didn't know at the time of when I tasted what the Wine Spectator rating was. I've now checked back at it. It's 93 points, which is what I rated it at. So um, anyways, hope you enjoy my tasting notes also. Let's get to the tasting of this wine. So I have had this wine on two other occasions it's still performing the same way that I had on, it's very consistent, my notes. So this is the second day that I've had it. When I first opened it last night for dinner with friends, um, out of the bottle, it was extremely um, acidic, um, but the nose was already very uh, herbaceous, um, with a lot of like the Ital Italian spite herbs, like oregano, basil, that came out right away. The taste was, um, quite sour right sour cherry acidic um, not that pleasing so um, then it firmed up we had dinner for about two two and a half hours it firmed up a bit aroma was still nice but the taste started to firm up the tannins it wasn't as a sour you got a little bit more of the savory taste this is now the next day and this is very very consistent with the other two times that i've tasted this wine in the last year and year and a half both times um, I served them at restaurants, both times it took about four hours before it really started to open. So again, it's a little early, but hey, it's life and I promised my viewers I was gonna open it. So I still think it's too early for this wine. Um, but you know, if you've got patience, you've got all day and you can open it, um, maybe it's still okay. So anyways, this has been open overnight now and this is my third tasting of this wine. Um, over the last two days. So let's um, take a look at it. Let's smell is the same. It has kept the same aroma that it had when I first opened it. Um, now it's actually a little bit more mellow. So it's got, um, when I first opened it, it was all herbs. Now it's got some um, black plums, um, almost like some black, black cherries, but it's still got that herbaceous like character. And what I mean, like herbs, the like Italian herbs, oregano, basil, um, things like that. And a little bit, a slight hint of like almost a tobacco leaf, slight, but I still don't think it's ready. Um, let's take a taste of it. Now this is after a day. Now it's softening up. Um, if you had this wine when I first opened it and now today, it's two totally different wines. When you first started, it was really acidic, really sour cherry to a point you might, for a beginner, you say it was a terrible wine. It's just not ready. After a day now, there's none of that. You get a little bit of, I don't even get this acidity anymore. I get all, um, savory elements, a very savory wine, tobacco, leaves, um, tea leaves, um, herbs, oregano, spice, um, basil. Um, I get the underlying fruit, but it's not pronounced. Me, to me, it's minerally, it's a little bit minerally. 
it's got a lot of those um, savory it's a very savory wine it's not I wouldn't call it a fruity wine it's a very savory wine and I can imagine this with Italian food oh like with pizza with a very simple margarita pizza it will be really nice it's it's almost like having um, it's it gives you the taste it gives you the the um, spices or the salt or the saltiness to go with um, kind of more plain food It'd be great with pasta. Italian, I can imagine with Italian pasta or with lamb. That'd be great. And it's getting better and better. I don't think it's actually ready at all. Yeah. Again, you don't get any of that acidity anymore. Um, it's all minerally... Um, savory uh, there is fruit but it's not pronounced it's in the background now if I had to guess it's more black fruit than red fruit um, but very soothing now it's calmed down after a day and it's quite nice um, and this is my experience over I've tasted three bottles of this over the last year it's the same experience I've had when you open it it's not really drinkable and you need so much time, minimum four hours, before it really starts to show its stuff. My final thoughts on this wine. Again, thank you viewers for allowing me or giving me an excuse to open this wine. I'm really, I'm really excited to what, taste this wine again. Um, it's the same note that I've had with my previous bottles of this wine. Um, so really, um, it needs some more time. Um, it still needs time. It's very young still. Um, I would give it another five years, probably 10, before it really opens up. Uh, my rating, I don't, I'm gonna put the wine spectator rating, I don't know what it is off the top of my head. My rating, 93 points right now, but I think it get better. Um, you do, if you're gonna open it, minimum four hours, um, go and decant it at home. It's very hard, unless you know the restaurant really well, to go and bring a bottle to them and decant four hours, or you have to open it. So you have to know them pretty well. But um, yeah, you need about four hours in a decanter, and, and I think that will it will taste like it would taste right now. Um, but if you can wait, I think it's gonna be a magnificent bottle in five or ten years. Again, really appreciate the viewers. Thank you for bringing me to ten thousand views. Our next milestone is gonna be two hundred fifty subscribers or twenty five thousand views. We'll try another better wine, and hopefully, you'll give me the opportunity to continue to um, share some great wines with you. Um, enjoy all the comments that people give me. Um, they're always, everyone's so kind and very positive. I'm just an amateur, probably not that uh, experienced and skilled in terms of talking and the video part of this, but I appreciate you guys uh, indulging me. And uh, until next time, happy drinking.